Greg Singh, he's the CEO, founder, right? Yes. Uh, Tag. We have to stand very, very close. We're at the <laughs> Summit Series Base Camp in Lake Tahoe. We're at Squaw Valley. And I just wanted to catch up with, with Greg because he's going through a big changeover in terms of his company. I think it'd be a great lesson for all entrepreneurs to learn how when you have something bad that happens in your company, a big PR mess, and how to turn it around. So talk about, first of all, what led to that PR mess? Yeah, so we had um, an issue around um, email address books in uh, June of 2009, and it was uh, a mistake that we made. We corrected it after three days, uh, self-corrected, but a lot of people accidentally imported and invited all their email contacts, and then it became both a legal and a PR issue, where various regulators got involved, and we also got a lot of bad PR. Involved. Basically, they lost a lot of trust from all of their, their customers, so my big question to you is, how in the world did you gain back your customers? So, and did you gain back the customers that you lost? Right. So. Um, we actually did not lose trust with of our customers. Um, our, our customers who have been with, with us for years uh, uh, continue to trust us and we saw no impact in, in, in any of the user metrics. Really, the, the uh, trust that we lost was from potential employees, you know, and, and, also, and, and all, all types of um, people that we wanted to partner with us in the company. So you didn't lose any numbers? We didn't lose any numbers. Yeah. I mean, are you talking active users or are you talking people that just signed up? Uh, active users. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, and so now you're taking a company in a whole new direction, so I'm curious, in what steps did your company take to turn around, even though you didn't lose customers, you still took te steps to actually turn things around and uh, better your reputation? Right. So even though we didn't lose customers, it's still a big problem. So, you know, having bad PR is bad for your own internal morale, uh, for prospective employees, for advertisers, and it also just wastes a lot of time. It takes yeah. a lot of time. A lot of time. A lot of time. So, really, what we did to um, to address it was, um, for the first time, really tell our own story. So, we'd always been of the mindset that, you know, build a really great product and the story will tell itself, but really, you have to do a little bit more than that. And I used to always think, you know, what's the point of PR is just, I'm, I'm not a very kind of bragging type of person by nature, and what's the point of kind of selling your story, why don't we just let the product tell it? Um, but looking back, we actually need to be much more proactive about it, so that we can tell our story, otherwise someone's going to tell it for us. Someone else will, exactly. exactly. So exactly. now you're, you're taking your company in a new direction, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, we started off as a social network, uh, right. and now we are in a, in a space we call Social Discovery, which is a fancy way of saying meeting new people. So we're one of the best sites in the world and one of the largest sites in the world for meeting new people. Okay, that's very vague. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it's, it's very vague. It's, it's meeting new people for any social reason. So it could be any, any form of romance, uh, going from flirting to serious relationships. It could be playing online games, social games together uh, to meet new people and for a shared interest of hobbies. So you're, you're going to put Match.com out of business and eHarmony out of business? Uh, I don't, you know, that's, that's not my goal. Um, <laughs> our, goal is to, our goal is to enable anyone in the world to meet and socialize with new people. And we currently form over 100 million new connections between people every single month. But how do you integrate? There are so many different social networks out there, right? How yeah. do you integrate them all and, and, and make sure that everything's cohesive so they don't have yeah. to go to so many different spots Exactly. So, so Tag itself is a social network. Uh, so, for meeting new people, and we have different features and apps on the site that uh, serve these different use cases around dating, around games, and around interests. So, in terms of what you're doing now, how are you protecting yourself to make sure that you don't have happen what happened before the little slip? Yeah. So, I have definitely learned, learned the lesson that you need to control your own story and. Um, and really be very proactive with PR, the media, journalists, and so on. And so we have a really great VP of marketing. You've met him, uh, Steve Sarner. Right, but it's a little bit more than that. It's also making sure, in terms of all the data and things like that, you're collecting the email addresses, just making sure to hold on to them, keep them tight. Oh, yeah. I mean, to, to, me, to me, that's the easy part. Um, we, we made a mistake, and I think we uh, more than paid for it. And we've set up various compliance processes with both our general counsel and our chief customer officer in order to make sure Nothing bad like this will ever happen again. And it was, must have been very frustrating. What was it that truly just kept you going? You had to have, to have had times. Tell me about that time when you thought, oh no, we're done. Yeah, so I never I never got down that deep, but I will say it was, it was definitely a tough time. And what kept me going was just a, a you know, 
the uh, internal passion that I have for for what for what building, and also the great people that I had around me, whether it's my co-founder Johan, um, my my employees that stuck with us, um, or our 10 million active users um, who knew what we were about and wouldn't let this this affect their trust in us. He's really learned the art of the PR pitch. Check out that <laughs> message, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this a few years ago. <laughs>